The second suspect from the shooting that happened here in the Days Inn parking lot on August 3rd has now been arrested. Yesterday afternoon, we learned that three bodies were found inside of a pickup truck located in Virginia, which has a connection to an Alexander County homicide case, which we reported on earlier this year in June. Soy Fentress Fountain, soy aquí con Marisol Rodriguez. Ella es semifinalista en la competencia Miss Health and Fitness. I just spoke with Debarius Pearson, and he is the visionary for this entire project. They were out here starting on Friday through Sunday, and they were actually just planning to wrap up things and planning on Saturday having kids come out and put their fingerprints down in the rectangular area. But as you can see, someone has defaced the mural. I spoke with a customer who stayed here over Thanksgiving weekend. He told me he eventually did receive a refund after he complained to the front desk about there being bed bugs inside of his room, but he says he was more upset about how the situation was handled. At a special session held yesterday, the Caldwell County Board of Education approved the state's Plan A reopening format, which would allow students in grades K through 5 to attend school four days a week. The North Carolina State Highway Patrol will be along the roadways once again this holiday season to stop dangerous driving before potentially life-changing collisions happen. Welcome back in. You're watching WHKY News. I'm Fentress Fountain reporting from Heinz Park in Conover with your forecast where it's another pretty day out so far. The rolling hotspots are being strategically placed in communities that lack reliable internet connectivity. For instance, right now I'm sitting at the Brawl Hill Park where one of the buses is placed. Over the last few months, I've had three different families reach out to me in reference to cases where they say their children or grandchildren are being placed in homes with their abusers. And despite tons of evidence presented inside the court, they are not being removed from these situations. First tonight, the Hickory Metro region has reported its highest increase in COVID-19 positive cases. Saturday afternoon, hundreds gathered here in the square in Burke County, which is in downtown Morganton, where a Confederate monument is placed. Now this morning, I spoke with several people, one person who actually created a petition Saturday afternoon after seeing what took place here in downtown. I also spoke with people who are for keeping the statue in its place. So the goal of the petition is simply to receive enough signatures that it simply can't be ignored. I'm fully aware of the potential of this effort being in vain. I'm completely aware that this effort may be shot down. I simply, as a citizen of this town, could not witness what I saw the other day and not do something to make any kind of a difference. If we receive enough signatures to really grab the attention of the city council and the people who matter in, in regards to having the statue removed and respectfully relocated to another location, then I'm willing to speak with them in regards to how we can go about that, what's the best way to do it, what's the most respectful way to go about it. I'm not here to drag anybody through the mud. I'm not here to uh, point fingers. I'm here simply because I want to see a more inclusive downtown area, more inclusive city where nobody feels offended. The Burke County Confederate Memorial stands on the grounds of the Burke County Courthouse in Morganton. It stands as a tribute to the soldiers of Burke County who fought and died during the Civil War between 1861 and 1865. Over 1,200 men of Burke County fought for the South during those years. That's why two of the men that I spoke with today say the monument must stay. More about preserving the history. It ain't nothing about nothing else. Races and all this stuff going on nowadays. It's got nothing to do with that. I mean... I have ancestors in there that's done their duty, and it's our duty to take care of what they had, and they gone. You know, I know they have a petition going around it. They want to take it down. You know, that's your priority if that's what they want to do. And, you know, we're more likely as regular citizens that have Confederate ancestors or start one also. So we don't know where it's going. This is the only big museum in Morganton. We don't have another place that this could go if it had to be moved, we don't think. So this, this is a museum here in Burke County. And that, that's why we feel it. this is a museum and I think it should stay here. So there you have it. That's a follow up from what took place here on Saturday. As you can see, people still very much divided as far as what to do with the monument. Reporting in Burke County, I'm Fendris Fountain, WHKY News. And we're back still reporting from the hot air balloon and let me tell you this is probably the coolest story I've ever done from start to finish it's a process from mapping out which direction to go rolling out the balloon heating it up 
loading in, and of course, taking off. We are inside the balloon. It is 120,000 cubic feet, which is about the size of eight homes packed in here. And we're cold packing it now. We're putting cold air in it, filling it up just like you would a regular balloon. And I'm gonna start adding heat, which will heat this to about 170 degrees. As you can see, it's not that large of a space. You'd think the flight would be a bit shaky when you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe, hundreds of feet above ground. But to my surprise and truly a delight, it was nothing but smooth gliding. You don't know you're even up in the air. It's just so amazing. Just the, the view coming up here is just, it's just breathtaking. Beauty and whatever you can see up here, the scenery is amazing. And to just be up here at sunrise and see the sun come up, it's just breathtaking. I would recommend it for everybody. Don't let the altitude of the flight scare you. Gosh, the world record for a hot air balloon, I think it's in the 30,000 category. You heard that right. Well, don't let the fear of heights stop you from going because I'm afraid of heights. I'm serious. I've always been afraid of heights my entire life. I can't do a two-story building. Can't do it. Fly a balloon. There's no sense of height. <laughs> and he's been flying since the 80s, and it shows. Typically for what we do, normally a thousand feet. I'll gradually work my way up to a thousand feet just to see what the winds are doing, and then once I've determined that, I'll make a decision on where we're trying to go and how fast we're going to get there and fly accordingly. Modern high air ballooning is what we see today started in the early 50s and it started here in Statesville at the Balloon Works out in Love Valley. Uh, they still manufacture balloons in this town. Hopefully, if any viewers plan on taking a flight, you'll get lucky enough to land with my pilot, Gilbert Martin. How fast uh, can it go? It can go as fast as it wants. I've been in a balloon traveling 40 miles an hour and landed at 2 miles an hour. Safe, experienced, and most of all, his joy for flying hasn't changed. Her name is That's Amori because I love what I do. And uh, I love the song by Dean Martin, like a big you know, pizza in the sky, or whatever they call it. That's Amori, so that's how she got her name. And it's the love, one of the loves of my life. Short of Miss Jenny, who's my significant other. <laughs> I love her. You can learn more about Carolina Balloon Fest by visiting their website or just head up to Statesville. It's here through Sunday. It's just such a cool experience. I mean, you wake up and... There's a balloon coming over your house. I mean, there's nothing like it, really. It just brings so much to this town, too.